It's the podcast that shakes and stirs up pharmacy. Welcome to PBM on the Rocks. I like your, what are you, this is your Jamaica, one love Jamaica. Look, so this is my homage to all of us that don't get paid enough to take Jamaican vacations. That's nice. I almost feel like I'm on a Jamaican vacation. Almost. Right? Yeah. If it wasn't for the back of my printer, which is often the star of the show along with me and anything I'm recorded on, if it wasn't the fact that it was here, I'd be like, oh, I actually feel like there's a little palm tree thing right here. Oh, oh perfect. Okay. Feeling like Jamaica all does the time. Does that help? It does. Yeah, it does. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, this is always a good way to kick off our little happy hour. I would love to know what people are drinking. I'm sure none of us can guess what Jeremy is drinking. Jeremy, what are you drinking today? I put together actually a really special, like, post-protest celebratory drink. I call it the Jubilee. Okay. And it is a really, really complex blend of jameson and ice cubes <laughs> i mix it special for today oh that's that yeah you know i and i jubilee I mean, yeah no it, it it makes so much sense that actually that's almost as good as what was that one you had last month the han shot first yeah the han shot first <laughs> non complex combination of jameson and ice cube there was a yes. single ice cube for every shot of jameson that's yes. right. very <laughs> it's a proprietary blend proprietary i love it i love yes. it that, that's great brandy what are you drinking miss jamaica well, I, I know this will like come as an absolute shock but i did put it in a really wait there we go so it's gentleman jack but look i have one of those fancy ice cube bowls oh look at that <laughs> Hey! How <laughs> well, gentlemanly of you. I'm that a very means, complex drinker like Jeremy. So your drink has more cooling per square centimeter or whatever it is than, say, my drink, which does not have a special ice cube. That's great. Danny, what are you drinking? Um, I'm not fancy as you guys, but I, I, I love Singtao, so I got the, the beer here. It tastes like uh, Stella. Nice. <laughs> that, that's a favorite one. Uh, some of the restaurants that I go to, I enjoy quite a bit. So I don't know if everyone knows, but of course, Danny's the incoming president of the Pharmacist Society for the State of New York. Mr. President, that is a presidential drink. <laughs> well, I guess... Um, all around, you know, all around. I couldn't afford something more <laughs> fancy, so we go with something <laughs> that we could, right? Well, Happy I don't birthday, think anyone Mr. President. ever accuse us of being fancy. <laughs> let's uh here's let's uh just take a moment to Speak say for uh, yourself <laughs> and here's to hoping the dang administration is better than the last two administrations over the last eight years in this country here 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 here, here. here. Yes. We look forward to your inaugural ball andrew russell in minnesota yeah. what are you drinking sir well i was trying to stick with the uh summer theme here and i had a high noon vodka seltzer Nice. And I also wanted to uh, lay into a little bit of a maybe a pharmacy theme. So, and Brandy, you'll like this. I, I added a little bit of uh, Tito's handmade vodka to it. Yes. Nice. Um, so, adding a little extra, you know, messed up to an already messed up situation, I call it the <laughs> uh, algorithmic price fixer. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. I love it. I love it. This is great. Oh, that's great. That recipe is definitely going. going. Oh, no. We'll see how it goes. If not, I've got a support beer over here just in case. <laughs> the the secret ingredient is crushed up Xanax. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. And, and is, let me guess. The support beer is not uh, paying the the little fee that goes with that. The support beer is probably being under reimbursed and having to pay copious fees for its oh, presence. Not at all. That was out of my own pocket. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds familiar. Yeah, it does. Vice President Lauren Young, hello. What are you drinking, my lady? I am drinking a standard spicy Paloma. So, Ooh, that's spicy. A little bit of tahini, a little bit of grapefruit juice, a lot of vodka, a lot of tequila. So <laughs> that's good. Yeah, Palomas are are magical. They are. They and, are and we do have the cocktail that Andrew mentioned in Illinois. One of oh. our favorite pharmacy friends, Dave Falk, 
uh, he calls it the Dave Falk special, but it was White Claw as a mixer with Tito's. There you go. And so he, he liked to have a uh, uh, generous serving of that on the lake in the summer to try to forget all the DIR fees that were being stolen from his stores. So we call That's that Dave Falk special. Nice. Wow. <laughs> I'll drink whatever Dave Falk drinks. As long as it's Jameson and Oz Keeps. the price fixer slash the Dave Falk special, everybody. That's that's great. Shannon, our podcast producer, what are you drinking? Um, well, this is uh, it's been quite a couple of weeks, so and I'm sure even more so for all of you. So I call this the um, cross-eyed chiller, mm. uh, and it is a large quantity of vodka. <laughs> with uh, elderflower tonic, a splash of ginger beer, and muddled peaches and basil. Wow. And bacon? Peaches and bacon? Basil. 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 Oh, I was going to say peaches and bacon. Wow, how did you do that? I think that'd actually be pretty good with the bacon. <laughs> you can keep basil in it, too. I mean, you can keep it vegetarian. You can't have that. Who doesn't have bacon with their peaches? How else do you can these things? <laughs> I'm a vegetarian, so it would have to be tofu. Tofu gets really mucky when you put it in, yeah. you know, liquid. So we're just going to avoid that part. Oh, I could not live without bacon. Nope, not possible. <laughs> I, there was a restaurant here that used to, uh, it's not here anymore, but it used to combine its bourbon with bacon grease and let it sit and then they would make bloody berries out of it and it sounds disgusting but it was actually really really good so it actually works very very well as an infusion bacon fat does you have to you have to be able to let it sit and then you're scooping it off the top as it rises just like anything would but if you have long enough to make it it's actually quite fantastic I mean, couldn't you just like take a piece of bacon and just drop it in there? And yes. the you could, in fact, also do that. It would be similar yet different. <laughs> like they serve yeah, these bloody yeah, marys. Like. And some, I don't know if y'all have seen some of these bloody marys where they it's not it's not actually bacon. It's actually like a, a little stick, and they put like a slider on it and some French fries and all these other things on it, and they call that oh. the bloody mary. And Sounds terrible. Be all oh, I, lived, I lived in Wisconsin for a while, and you get a whole meal with your Bloody Mary right on top. Right, right. Yes, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Can't go wrong. Wonderful little fixer. Okay, so this will not surprise Brandy, but for everyone else, you know, I love bourbon, but lately I'm obsessed with a Tom Collins cocktail, so I made Ooh. my version of it. I know Brandy's like, I never heard of that before. I'm so um, shocked. The reason that I become obsessed, it's my, it's my summer drink, the official drink for, for my summer uh, here in Phoenix, where it's already 102 degrees and it's not even June yet. So um, we were in St. Louis and we were at the Drury Bar, that great hotel chain that is on every other block in St. Louis and they have free drinks. And one of the drinks on offer was a Tom Collins. And I was like, gosh, I haven't had a drink from the 70s before, so I had this drink and really enjoyed it. And then I found out it's really from like 1910 or something like that. But it's so good. I highly recommend everyone try one. Nice. So, y'all, like, should we just go ahead and address the big fucking issue? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Should we just fucking dive in to CPESN? <laughs> You know, they're having another webinar tonight, like as we speak. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it, is it yeah. a webinar or is it a town hall? Or is it a I fire I think It's a CBS. shit show is what it is. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, it is. I think yeah. Who here, who here is a CPSN member? Uh, I am. <laughs> I am. Lauren is. Danny, um, are you? Yeah. 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 Deb also is. I know it's pretty good. Like, what's it like in New York? I know, like, the New York pharmacies do pretty good with it. Yes. They help us a lot. And I have a lot of our members were suffering during COVID and we're do, doing really well. And now they're helping us with the other uh, long term care and other avenue. So, in, in a way, uh, CBSN create a lot of business model, help our member to survive. I feel like it's very state specific. This is a lot of the feedback that I'm seeing. And so it sounds like New York has really like, you know, tried to to maximize those opportunities where maybe some other states haven't. Like North Carolina is supposed to be another state, I think, that yes. really does well. 
it, it could be that uh, issue because in New York we have very good team leader and the uh, luminary are very much engaged with member and we set up the chat and help each other best practice and, and they're very connected. So they growing in that sense. So um, it, it's very different. Okay, so let's talk about the money side of it. Like how much money are you making off of these services? Um, like, are you making an extra 50 grand a year, an extra 100 grand a year, extra five grand a year? Like, I, I feel like it's that's it. I mean, it depends because a lot of members were not engaged in it. Everything else, when we start in something, they are afraid. And this is really, I encourage everybody um, if you see something new, you know, get curious, get involved, and learn from it. You know, just don't just, you know, just don't get a chance to learn and, and, and you just step on the side already. Uh, we find very, I was actually, during COVID, I was one of the newest member to join them. Other folks would join like 100 members before, but they did not engage the level that I was, and we was able to, to maximize that potential. Well, Danny, right. I have a question for you. So you said you encourage people to get curious about that. So what, what attracted you to CPESN? Help us, help us get the idea, because, you know, so Lauren's a member and our president is a member. You're a member, uh, but there's been a, a big uproar this week. So, of course, the knee-jerk reaction would be to get angry about that. But you Correct. you sound like you're you're a fan. So I'd love to know, like, what attracted you to it? Why did you sign up? And, and, and after COVID, how has it been? Is it is it as good as it was during COVID? Is it better? Is it the same? Um that's very interesting because, um, you know, we, we had very good time with CPSN. Over the year, we were, um, CPSN have always introduced a lot of new idea to, to help us like uh, long-term care, for example. One of those things that uh, I, we've seen member were, were picking up and doing well. Um, what happened last week with ES, uh, ESI was a different issue. They already came out and talked about that also. And, and nobody like, you know, CPSN is more of, um, they, they declared it as well that it's um, um, vendor agnostic, right? They don't sponsor anyone. They more of the practice. And that's what we think that the pharmacists have potential in, in terms of, uh, of expense scope of practice. This is the avenue where we are um, training into and many of the state are training to that. And we've seen the, the reimbursement and that side seems to be fairer. There's no DIR fee or anything to cut back at such. And you are leveraged to like, you know, we want to get a provider status, right? That's where we say we don't want to give uh, free for advice. If you talk to a lawyer, you know, they charge you. I mean, you talk to my accountant, they charge you. Why is it that I'm going to school so long and call me a doctor, but I give for free? I don't get that, you know? But but that's where, you know, why CPSN could be that potential that we say, hey, we're all going to unite under one umbrella and say, this is where we negotiate it. And believe it or not, CPSN is only independent network the rest of them out there are just not negotiating your behalf look at psal model most of them owned by you know layer of conflict interest right uh, i don't know tomorrow cpsn will be at that church but as they follow their you know cope ethic i think this is very potential um so um you know from that perspective we've seen that uh, for my practice uh, we continue to learn a lot of different model over the years like uh like you know how to um, you know get into the insurance business which so into the patient how to choose the plan to help themselves to navigate to pharmacy to the providers um how equity help the patient beside be, be beside the pharmacy arena you help them in their um you know home environment foods um, um shortage and housing and all of that kind of things uh, help them so it, it's go beyond the pharmacy um, arena that we all seen, um, and I say this, is, is the pharmacists seem to look in like a box in some way. Um, be realistic. Tomorrow, the machine will replace us and we do, you know, stick and fill model. That's what we used to do, right? That's going to be gone. Pharmacists will be focused a lot onto clinical and other expense corporate practice. It's uh, the I thing, Danny, that, that like this is where our issue comes in is I think they're going to try to get rid of us regardless. I think we're getting used right now with the clinical stuff. I think their entire game plan right now is to use us 
uh, to take physician market share. And once we start taking physician market share, then they're going to continue to underpay us even worse, like we saw with MTMs, everything else. Because if you look at how we're paid for things like vaccinations, everything else, and uh, physicians, of course, got paid a lot more. Of course, they want us to step in and try to take some of this stuff. They can pay us less. But the thing is, is once they start doing that, they can also cut on the other end. The, they can hit us with lower reimbursements on the drug end and say, oh, they're just making it up elsewhere. We see it in state hearings all the time where they're just like, no, no, they use their pharmaceuticals as loss leaders. Complete fabrications. Like we're going to use fucking millions of dollars in sales as fucking loss leaders. They love to come in and play this game because... We can't negotiate with these plans because we are negotiating with these PBMs. They are one giant conglomerate. And when they can just shift money around, they can do a full bait and switch on us. And then we're just set here, like being the useful idiots of healthcare. And we've helped them take over physician market share and worked against ourselves in the end. That is my problem with the underlying CPSN issue and the push for clinical pharmacy in the retail setting. That's my personal, like, underlying issue with them trust me i don't begrudge any of you all doing any of this because i think like you do good work with this stuff and i think everyone right now you know they need to make money where they can but also a lot of these models they only work in certain niches like not a lot of pharmacies can do a lot of these things some don't have access to long-term care you know some can't do some of these other things some can't have you know uh, start up an online mail order pharmacy when their wife works for CVS and they can basically do nothing while they do a mail order pharmacy and give presentations <laughs> on it. You know, some of us can't do that. I agree with you. For that, you know, I would have to get another drink to get a thought of that. <laughs> yeah. The truth is we are up again, um, you know, a giant, right? Monopoly giant. And they collaborate together. They actually literally own our government. And that's what we actually against, right? Uh, and so we are trying to be a survivor. We try to go one thing to another and see where the the the, the ball lands. The kind of kicking the can down the road. Unfortunately, even our pharmacists ourselves, a lot of us don't don't step up. And like earlier, you have seen many um, podcasts that we talk about. I mean, sometimes even our own pharmacists are, are working against our own interests. Right. They don't, don't even advocate for it. And so you're right, because we are finding a way that they corner us left and then we cut to another territory and vice versa. They stack us against each other. Many layer of con conflict of interest. This has to go. The product of the healthcare system today is is so much conflict of interest. There's nothing for patient. That is what we all swear to protect. And here we are just nothing in our healthcare system today to let the patient go up. I make money, we make money by filling prescription. Doctor make money by seeing the patient. There's no way we get the, the patients off the hook. This is not the way we should be. Well, I'll go with saying, you know what? You get 10 trucks, now get up to, go to A and eventually to zero. That should be the healthcare. Today I call this system, I call healthcare. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. the health, <laughs> you know? <laughs> So, um, you know, I, I wasn't born in America. I born in Vietnam. I came here, I escaped the communists. This is the model communists do. They underpay everybody. Um, I tell you a story. I grew up in Vietnam where the national, when the communists nationalize everything. So they buy all these uh, stocks, everything in the country. So we farming the pig. So we, we, we raise the pig cost of $50. They wanted to sell to them for $10 and they turn around, they sell to the public for $20, right? So it's losing money. So nobody want to do that. So they end up doing like the black market and they harassing them, arresting them, etc. So net result, nobody wanted to, to raise pick anymore. So what do you do? They grow their own picks. It cost them a thousand dollars to raise a pick where they're going to sell $20 because the model is, you know, it doesn't work. And that exactly what happened. You see here we have where CVS came up, pay themselves to the point that they, they have their competitor undercut them, that they couldn't even survive. Now we become carnivalism, where they have to shut their own store. Yep. And the independent guy like us, we don't even have a chance to survive. I think that we in this country that we became to a point where a small entity that dictate the whole government, just like the way that we have with a single unit of communists. And that's not patient care at all. 
Yeah. I no, think it, I think a lot of the issues that we are having, like especially those outside of it, is uh, CPSN, like a lot of their members love them and they've made a lot of people like some pretty good money. Like, what was it, 3,400 stores, something like that? Uh, and they do that. But those of us outside that network, we see these hearings coming up and we see uh, the protests that we all just worked our ass on. And then there's this fucking announcement from ESI. And it's like, it's like P or CPSN walked into a trap that any of us could have saw because they were too trusting. And it's just like, yeah, you negotiate with Cigna and you get this plan. You're, you're working with ESI. Like, just be aware of it because it feels like this could have been timed differently. And, oh, you know, CPSM wanted this feather in their cap. Oh, we got all six of them. I got that fucking sixth infinity, infinity stone. So I've yeah. got this fucking clinical pharmacy gauntlet. Look at me. Look what I got. Oh, shit. That's right. We shouldn't have made a deal with these people. Like, it was poorly timed. And the thing is, is they could have, like, given a little pushback all that they've done and this is what's pissing me off so much is like we've all sat back and i've had a post or two but i've not went full on nuclear like i could on them like we've all sat back and we're trying to wait for people to give some explanations and the only people giving explanations are the cpsn members not the organization not anyone else they're not coming out and explaining this they're making excuses for it and that's fucked up and we feel like we've been betrayed because of this timing that's wrong that's what's killing us right now it's not like i don't like that business model of pushing clinical too much and undercutting everything else. But it's in the grand scheme of thing, not that many stores. I want everyone to make money. I want everyone to do what they can to survive. But whenever this happens, it does undercut our efforts because it, it gives ESI something to hit us with. This was poorly timed and people should be fired over this. I mean, there should be heads rolling. There should be members lost. There needs to be pushback on it. There needs to be public pushback on it. There needs to be a lot of things and they can't just wring their hands and hope it goes away. There has to be something major done or there's not going to be forgiveness on this, especially if ESI uh, goes in front of Congress and they're like, oh man, they really are doing something, which we all know they're not. Like that's, that's our big hang up. Not so much with CPSN as it exists and its business model, I want pharmacists to make as much money as they can. But they fucked us, man. They fucked us bad. And we worked really hard on that. We worked really hard on getting to where we are. I really thought we were all getting on the same page with stuff. And then they fucking do this. And they got played. Full on fucking played. And it, yeah, and it was just think, easy to see. Don't think for one moment that what they did in Florida and this announcement by ESI they will run this out in these congressional hearings like literally someone walked right into a trap and if they didn't walk into a trap they should be screaming from the rooftops about the fact that this was not a collaborative announcement this was not a collaborative decision like you have been used and abused per usual by esi and <clears throat> if this was not a collaborative a collaborative announcement then you need to respond as such yeah. that's the problem and then my my other issue with cpsn is yeah okay it's great we're trying to find alternative revenue sources but it's just giving the pbms a pass to continue to underpay us 95 percent of our business is prescriptions if we don't get the reimbursements correct then we have no future. You can do as many MTMs or clinical services as you want to, but if you're not making money on the majority of your day-to-day -day business, then nothing's gonna help. That what That's what keeps getting lost over and over and over. Like our advocates or, you know, CBSN, like that's, that's where you should be focused because these other clinical services, all you're doing is just enabling these PBMs to continue to undercut us. And that's what makes me crazy. And it's one of the reasons I'm like, forget it. I'm not, I'm not trying to do more work for less money to just try to make up for not being paid appropriately for the 95% of my daily business. How, how does no one see this? This is what makes me crazy. And just so Danny knows that we're not like 
making him the official. No, 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 no. I'm not I'm I'm I'm, 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 I'm fine. You know, I, you know, I always said everyone have their own opinion and we respect that. This is why this country is beautiful because we have diversity. But are we come to focus? What are we really talking about? We want better healthcare system tomorrow. And for us, we want a better life for pharmacists. Now I see students coming out, I see pharmacists are laid up. It's heartbreaking, you know, and we are under attack. Doesn't matter where you are, we are getting hurt. It's not like you are safe in hospital, you are safe in, in um, uh, academic. We are getting hurt because yeah. this group get hurt, that group would just compete with each other, the race to bottom. So I I'm all open to that. Yeah. I understand. And it's like I always tell everyone, like everyone's talking about now we got to try to write the ship and stuff. And that's fine. You all can write the ship. I'm going to blow the fucking ship up. That's I'm what I do. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to light the like, fuse for you. Yeah, exactly. Like that's my entire mentality. I don't think these companies can exist. I don't think we can coexist. They're going to continue to leach out everything until we're gone. They actually we have to show to everyone that these companies are going to run everything into the ground. And it is a house of cards. And I think they're doing a pretty good job of showing it for us right now. Yeah, I don't think Norman, any of us can they exist. Can pay pharmacies, they can come out with new contracts and do retroactive payments to make pharmacies whole in Florida. That tells you right there, they can do it. They, they know they it. can do it. They know they should be doing it in every single state should be fighting for exactly what happened in Florida. And if they only did it in Florida to give a political win, that, that's all they did. Like they were forced to. Right. But the, if any of your state associations are not jumping on board with this and going, we're going to talk about this, we're going to reach out to them. Like that's a problem. That's a huge problem. Every single state association should be doing exactly what Florida did. And every single pharmacist should be awesome like we all were and get out to the protest and do this stuff. Yeah. Because we had some good stuff happening. <laughs> we had some great stuff happening. Yeah, we did. I was Danny, only I'm so glad you joined us so for bright. that. Oh, we have a picture of Danny in there, too. Yes, I'm so glad yeah. Danny was there. Danny and uh, Mark Posen. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good time. I was so glad everybody came out. Like, it was it was good like it was it's good to actually like meet everyone too like it's it's it was weird like seeing so many people like i knew uh i mean putt members included like i talk to these people every day and it's still like you know good to actually see them in person yeah. but yeah it, it's it's good to see the community out and getting everyone together and i think that's like going forward like what we got to try to keep in mind and try to like keep like the momentum up for is getting people out to these protests and coming out together and talking. Talking's a big thing. We got to communicate. We got a game plan. And we got to make sure that we're not making deals when other people are, you know, doing other things, protesting the fucking company. So, you know, we all just got to talk. <laughs> I think there's a lot of value in, in in people getting together and communicating. I'm with you, Jeremy. It's always nice to to get to talk to our members and talk to our friends out there because, you know, people, I think there's this perception sometimes that PUT is a different organization than it actually is. We are, we're fantastic. We are nationwide, but we don't have a headquarter office. We're a virtual organization and we've got presence in almost every state. We're, much, we're more in the center of the country and on the East and Southeast, but, you know, we, we talk to each other every day and we're like friends and like family and like Danny, I remember uh, when you arrived in St. Louis and you know, you were sending out texts and we're like, come join us. And then we figured out we were, <laughs> we're, we're, we're too far away from, from our hotels. That won't happen at the next protest. Uh, but it was just really, it was cool. It was really, really cool. And, and I think the, the value of our relationships and our ability to, you know, talk and talk openly about these things makes putt a very, good organization to be a member of. 100%. You know, if you're not going to be president of Pisney, I mean, you know. Yeah. You're, you're, you're yes, uh, I mean, my journey to Pisney is very interesting because, you know, like all of us, you see here pharmacists or operate hand-to-mouth operation, and a lot of us are very fearful of PBM retaliation and left and right on top of that, you know, uh, staff and the paperwork were being drowned. Um, I was fortunate to to get out of that situation, and I said to myself, what do I really do? I want to do for the next 10 and 20 years. 
uh, that I want to see myself from 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 20 years from now. What do I look at like? What do I want? And the truth is, um, I was very much afraid, afraid of PBM hurting me, afraid of any like political background backlash to me every way. Um, but I said, you know what? Screw that. I'm going to step out and do what I can. I'm going to look at my kid and say, you know what? I stand up and I fight the tyranny. I did it for you. And this, the hell with this healthcare system coming down, I would have to stand up and say, I did that. I'm not going to go like away just because I didn't put up, I have to put up a fight. And so that's where I, I step up and, and, and carry on until today. And, um, you know, I hope that, you know, pharmacists, you are smart out there. Many of you are very smart. You need that leader courage that you can stand up and say, you know what? You're not just doing it for business. You're doing it for your family and your patient, your community. And if that means something, you step up and fight. Okay, enough of these BS that PBM did it. We got to step up together. So this is why you know. I like you, Danny. That that was great. <laughs> this is why I like you. No, I, I've got the same mentality. It's just like I'll die screaming. Like I will do as much damage on the way out if they force me out as I can. And it doesn't matter. Like I'm not afraid of them coming after me. I'm not afraid of anything else. I'm just gonna keep talking. What 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 else can they do to me? Pay me less? I don't give a fuck. Like I'm just gonna go out and I'm just gonna do my thing because when we all look back on it, if we all get run out eventually, I, I, I'm going to be able to like hold my head up high and say, well, I fucking fought, didn't I? That's right. And a very interesting, though, when you start to engage with public, um, I always believe this. And part of you know human nature or culture in a certain way, we see Angel. Angel and each and every one of us in different times. And the people that I never met in my life came and helped me. When I had certain problems that I never realized, they were picked it up and I say, dude, I, where were you when I need your help more? But, you know, this is where it was. So, um, you know, pharmacists are, are very uh, amazing and, and they just, you know, there. I see them, whether they work in retail, they work in the academic anywhere, we came together. And like we hadn't met each other before the last event that we got together, but we connect at a heartbeat. We don't have a distance from there. It's just like, this is it because we know the same course it affecting every pharmacist across the country and so you know we just encourage everyone to step up and avoid themselves avoid their opinion and say this is what happened you know you can't be hiding in the corner forever you got to step out in the light and say this is it yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> the time for being nice and quiet is over yeah it's, it's, speaking of nice and quiet Andrew, give yeah. your opinions. <laughs> oh man! Speaking I, of I was just stepping out and I know, right? New member Andrew. <laughs> yeah, right. So I, I mean, this whole time I was just thinking about you know I, I'm I'm pretty new to this whole thing too. So um, coming out and uh, speaking out is one of those things. Like I, uh, the realization that that happened for me was we had a we had a patient that I would deliver drugs to, right? And um, uh, every day I, I, I'd come in and and uh, I'd say, hey. How, how, how are you doing? What are you up to today? And she'd say, oh, I'm just sitting here trying not to die. And I was like, oh, my God, that sounds exactly like independent pharmacy. Um, how, is it, what, is like, your patient I, Eeyore? I, like, I'm yeah. just trying not to die. It did seem like I mean, uh, Yeah, no, I'm just sitting here trying not to die. And I was like, damn, that sounds exactly like what we're doing around here. And I'm like, man, I gotta, we got to do something. So, and it, so that's when I got online. I'm like, well, who do I need to find? Who do I need to talk to? And I, I basically stalked Deb for like three months. And um, <laughs> I, I went to our uh, Minnesota Pharmacy Legislative Day, and I was like, I have one goal today. I need to meet Deb. And and I met her, and we hit it off. And I, I've been I've been behind Pud ever since. I mean, just seeing a group like this that's not afraid to say what's on their mind, not say what's what's happening out there is it's, it's refreshing. And I think we all need to step up and do it. And I'm ready to, I'm ready to join in and do it as well. I mean, um, I, I, I listened to all of the, all of the PBM on the rocks episodes. And I'm like, man, I'm ready to run through a brick wall for these guys. Let's go. Nice. You know? So I, I I'm mean, in. let's, let's hammer it. You just gotta be genuine. That's the thing is like you come in and you're genuine with people and you're genuine about what you say. And, you know, you take care of your communities. You do what you do to take care of your families, everyone. And eventually, like, people see that. 
especially when you're, you know, talking the truth and you're out here and you're putting your neck out and yeah. people respect that. And people also, they will listen to people, I think, a little more uh, when they know that people are sticking their neck out. That's why I try to educate my patients, you know, quite a bit on all this stuff. I mean, they are more responsive to our message than you'd think. And it makes me happy when Andrew was feeling like, full Eeyore, and then he talks to Deb, and he's like, <laughs> Yeah, no, I had, I had to drive over to, I, I drove over to Winstead to see Deb's pharmacy. I had to make sure it was real. Like, no way. <laughs> like, I, I, don't, I don't know person. how she sleeps, seriously. Like, there she is. She, yeah, she's wow. like nonstop. <laughs> yeah. she's, like, she's like the silent killer. Like, oh, she'll man. just go back and observe everything, and then all of a sudden she opens her mouth, and you're like, whoa, 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 hold yeah. on. I need to be taking notes. Yeah. I've, I've I'm not the, afraid <laughs> of giant conglomerates with the powers of European countries. I'm not afraid of that, but I'm afraid of crossing Deb. <laughs> That's right. right, yeah. No, absolutely. But you know what's really great? So to your point, Andrew, and I've told this story many times and I'll tell it again. So when I found putt, I was literally just at my wit's end and was like, I'm a terrible business owner. Like, this is like, obviously I need to sell my farm RC, get out of pharmacy. I have no idea what I'm doing. And then I started talking to another owner in my town and he had been an owner for like 35 years. And he was like, Oh no, Brandy. He was like, I'm dealing with the same stuff. And I was like, wait, what? And then my um, Senator came in and actually said, have you heard of this group called putt? And I was like, huh? What? He was like, I think you should look them up. Like you, you should check out putt. And I was like, Oh, okay. And I, went online. I can't even remember how it happened. I think I sent an email and then it was like, Oh, I found my people. Absolutely. <laughs> and it was yeah. like, Brandy rolled on. Like I remember the first minute I was like, who's this bitch? Like, <laughs> this, she's awesome. <laughs> but it's just like Danny said too, like, we, you know, we have to stop being afraid to talk about it. And that's the thing. Like, you just got to talk about it. And the more we talk about it, you know, we're going to find solutions. We're going to find ways to navigate this entirely upside down, backwards world. But you just have to keep talking about it. And then the bigger thing is ask questions. Yeah. Don't yes. drink the Kool-Aid. Don't eat the cookies. Ask the questions. Ask for the ingredients on the label. Ask for proof. Like, that's the thing, like for so long, you know, we've just been told like this group is doing this or this group is doing this or this is how it has to be. And I'm like, nope, that's not working for me. Like, yeah. That's not how it has to be. I'm going to be. That's the thing. <laughs> Our members, like those of us on the board, please tell us if we're saying something wrong. Because number one, we want to get it right and we want to represent you all right. Number two, I don't want to sound like a fucking idiot. If I'm saying something <laughs> stupid, then tell me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. we will. No worries, Jeremy. We will. Yay! <laughs> Too, I'm like I'm I'm new to independent pharmacy. Like I was I wasn't born into it. Like uh, like you or Jeremy, I didn't and I didn't uh, I didn't have somebody telling me not to do it. You know, um, yeah. Like nobody said, "Hey, you're an idiot." Uh, God love I mean, when I got this, into right? this, it was still <laughs> a great business. <laughs> it's like, yeah, this is what my family does, and it's like <laughs> if it goes under, like we're like the fuck we gonna do <laughs> yeah yeah then you get in and you're like what what is what the hell yeah. what the fuck is happening i in mean here? my pharmacy opened in like 2016 so things weren't great but i could still make money and yeah. then covid happened and it's like okay we got these we got these shots and they're bringing in some revenue that's pretty good but you know reimbursement's really getting hit they use the revenue from the shots and the business loans and everything else they use that as an excuse to cut us on reimbursement side and then it never went back up so that's why i'm really skeptical of anything we do to work with them because we got to either kill these vampires or just accept that we are vampire cattle like that's we are right. going to be like exactly. like vampire hunter d they're going to keep us as fucking cattle or some shit just go ahead and, just, and like bleed your own self out like put it in a jar as like yeah. a, a weekly donation yeah they're just coming around you know get your blood sucked every couple of days it's just like yeah. all right i'm good can i it's eat like going back to like the middle ages with like leeches you know and blood yeah. <laughs> I, i'm almost at a little bit of an advantage because I, I don't know what the good times look like i don't i, I don't it's, either it's all, right there with it's all you. the same I don't to me, know. You know? 
Like, I grew I, up yeah. in the real good times. Yeah. Like the nineties, two thousand. Like pharmacies oh. made money. And here's the thing. Pharmacies made a ton of money back then. And you know what else? Medications were cheap as fucking dirt. So all this talk about BBMs keeping medication costs down and everything else and the net cost and everything, none of it's true. All right. that happened was a lot of the blockbuster drugs started going over, over to like not being name brand anymore. And they're like, how the fuck are we going to make money now? Oh, wait. We'll just help. really jack the, the, the price up on these other drugs, these fewer ones. And that's what caused it to really get out of hand. Drugs were not expensive. Even the brand drugs back in the day and pharmacies made good money and they offered a ton of free services and there went above and beyond because they were paid well. They do anything to get a patient in the door. And yep. those were the good days and patient care was awesome. And now we have this fucking shit. Yeah, All because we let a bunch program. of middlemen come in and try to leech everything they could off of it. And now we've got to try to like have 80 billion side hustles and nickel and dime everything and look at every individual claim and see, oh, did they pay me enough on this? What if I calculate my GER against my rebate against what they might owe me on this end? We have to do all that instead of them just fucking paying us. You know, oh Johnny, my God, I hate this fucking industry. That business That's model. why I'm going to kill it. In the, in the day when all of that was going on, you can just sort of on this side of things, you can just see how in a way like you guys were being groomed to end up in the place that you're in now. Um, it's part of what makes it so mind blowing to kind of go back to where we started. It's what makes it so mind blowing every time an organization, whether they feel like they have to, or they feel like they want to try to do a partnership with somebody like Express Scripts. I, it's crazy because we were kind of joking about this earlier today on our board meeting, but it's really like, you know, the person who raises a tiger or a boa constrictor and then they get killed by the tiger or the boa constrictor or they get mauled or something. They're like, I don't understand why that happened. Well, it's a wild animal. It's pre its nature is predatory. It eats people. This is why people don't have bears as pets. And if you're going to try it, you're going to get what you get. And so every time, you know, like, uh, you know, like CPSN with the partnership with Express Scripts, everyone's like blown away about the timing of the press release and the, you know, all of that, the communication and all that. But no one should be surprised by that. Last week, Florida uh, Medicaid and the Florida Pharmacy Association put out a big release talking about this great thing that Express Scripts is doing where they're going to change their rates. They didn't say what the rates were. And they said that pharmacies are going to be paid retroactive to January 1st, 2024, which is nice. But really, you shouldn't be tooting your horn about that. You should be saying, yeah, you owe us that money and you owe us more money from the years before when you weren't paying us. Like It's like you're, the pharmacy organizations that continue to do this, all they do is they just they just shoot themselves in the foot over and over and over with the same sort of belief like, oh, this time, I don't know what if it's this time, it'll be different. No, you are dealing with a predatory organism. Its nature is it will eat you. That's what pharmacy benefit managers do. They will yeah. eat pharmacies. That's their nature. And, and we can't fight one head of the hydro without another popping up. No. Like we can't do that. And that's why it's so important to break them up. And that brings me to my next thing. She's our only hope. <laughs> that's my that's my Christmas ornament. Oh, that is my Christmas yes. ornament yes. that Emily will not let me use. Yes. I'm not allowed to. Oh, she doesn't have a crown on today. Oh, man. Angel wings. Yeah. And you look at like, I, everything. I couldn't that. decide between a star and an angel, so I went with both. Yeah, that's nice. That's beautiful. <laughs> And then, uh, and then they'll, slap, like, they'll slap a cautionary note regarding forward-looking statements on everything, right? Actually, yeah. actual results differ materially from those expressed or implied in forward-looking statements. Beware. If you look at their website, almost everything, all of their programs they put down, at the end, they put down a cautionary note regarding forward-looking statements. It basically reads, um, forward-looking statements cause actual results differ materially from those expressed or implied forward-looking statements. Anytime they say something that hopefully it will, will or can or might, yeah. uh, the, the actual results may vary. So TSPN. Oh, yeah. 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 My entire thing is like <laughs> this week, 
Yeah. This week, you could not turn around without your dick hitting a fucking press release about ESI doing good shit. They are feeling pressure. We can't give them wins. We can't. Exactly. Like, oh, my God. At least have an answer so to them. This. At, at least, like, if CPSN just came out and had this tweet, they were just like, no, fuck those dicks. I'd be like, oh, my God, I'm joining tomorrow. Yes. Like, just membership. give some pushback. Jesus Christ. Yeah. We get walked all over. Yeah. Lifetime yeah, membership. Have a big hearing coming up. But that's part of yes. the problem. And that's on us. That's on us. Is it Not us, but because we are the only ones who apparently are going to call out what's going on for what it is. But. You know, also, I don't want to hear anything from anyone from any other organization when we actually push back. We gave everyone a ton of time to do it, so I don't want any one of my fucking messages over it. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to get them. You'll totally yeah, get them. I know. I'm going to fucking get them. But it, it, it really is like, you know, this is why we are in the shape we're in, because we continue to be an, an industry of nice, trusting people who, for some reason, think it's okay to crawl into bed with a wild predatory organism which is going to try to kill you when you're not expecting it the way it's been going for this many years is is really shameful and the fact that it's not turned around isn't on congress it's on us as an industry it's on it's us. that's the point congress can't do anything we can pass these laws it's not gonna matter at this point because they're just gonna shuffle the money over to their mail order which is what they're doing right now until we break them up none of it's gonna matter and we can get on here and you know talk about like hitting the pbms and we should if we secure reimbursement there's gonna be a lot of this pushback go away if we can secure at least the pharmacies to survive and be all right a lot of what they're seeing is going to go away and i don't think they quite realize that but the thing is is it's not going to fix the system like but it's going to at least keep us alive if all of these organizations and all of these advocates came together and literally focused on reimbursement mm -hmm. we could get somewhere but everyone is going 15 million different ways and ignoring the elephant in the room. Fix the reimbursement model. Like, and that's why communication's key. You can't fix key. anything else until you fix that. That's yeah. it. Yes. Let's and if you're going to do a thing and make a deal, give us a heads up so that we can tell you don't make that fucking deal. Are you serious? Do you see what's going on? At least let us coordinate it to where it's like the week after a congressional hearing. Jesus, yeah. fuck. Right? It's right. amateur hour half the time. Well, and I will say this. So, Danny, I was in New York um, several years ago, and I had a really eye-opening conversation with the, the Speaker of the House, uh, their, their chief of staff. And so there was a group of New York pharmacists that were sitting around this table. I was just a quiet listener kind of participating in the conversation. And I remember distinctly this guy said, well, I mean, why can't you guys just sell enough, I don't know, toothpaste to make it <laughs> you know, on your front end? Right? And, and it was such a shocking statement that for a second, everybody was really quiet. And, and I remember because, again, I, I was newer, but I like, you know, I raised my hand. I'm like, can I just say something? And. The guy was like, yeah, sure, say something. And I said, well, I don't think you understand that three organizations process 80% of all of the prescriptions that go through insurance in this country. I mean, what would you call that? And he goes, well, I'd call it a monopoly. And I said, exactly. That's the problem. You can't go up against a monopoly. And you really can't go up against a monopoly when you are an independent pharmacy. There's absolutely no way any pharmacy could sell enough toothpaste or you know, gift candles or anything else on the front end, right? And it was a great conversation. And what it was one of the things that I thought was, you know, really notable about your state and how your, you know, your state house, you know, looked at things. Now, you back then, Cuomo was the governor, and you know, it was a uh, the house was up to a lot of different things. You have this amazing senator, also um, James Scoofus, who's been on your side and is really you know, worked very hard for you guys. So, so maybe things really are, you know, different and better there than they are in other parts of the country. As far as this goes, I don't know. I mean, what, what are your thoughts about the condition of pharmacy in New York now versus where it was? Um, thank Monique to bring to the point uh, on that. Um, we, we were fortunate for last year where we were able to push it back 
to the um, Medicaid managed care back to fee for service. And because of that model, we, we are not losing money on every single prescription that you've seen. So many of our members were able to sustain that. And in January, were um, impact with the DLP, um, you know, the last draw that they have, and these members were able to 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 grab onto the the, the uh, you know, fee for service, and they were they were very happy that that happened. Um, but this is it's an uphill battle. I think it's not just pharmacists alone. I think it's a patient, every healthcare uh, in, uh, out there, as well as the lawmaker, right? Um, they are responsible for the citizen, and and we are part of that. So we need to continue to, like Jeremy said, educate educate ourselves first, educate patients, and educate everyone out there. And saying, you know what, en enough is enough. Let's step up and say, like, this is the day that we cannot take enough of this no more. I mean, yes. I don't see why that I yes. feel. Not <laughs> I, I love mean, it. I I'll be honest with you. I'm, I mean, sadly, I'm in Hell Kitchen, which is a block away from Times Square, and we have five pharmacy closed within six years and no new pharmacy able to open up and all the patients come to us, but yet we couldn't survive. I'm losing uh, money in that. And, and on top of that, I, I you know, basically it's a cutback that I end up have to fire half of my staff. It's not the right thing. It's like, give me, you know, I'm sorry, they give me shit. And that's not the way it works. You know, to me, the pharmacy is no longer making money. Okay, that's a fact. I, I would rather drive an Uber and make more money and being a yeah. pharmacist. It seems like, you know, I'm, I'm a doctor in Cuba in a way, you know, <laughs> driving taxi and make more money. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but, you know, it's the point where I'm like, how long can I help these patients? You know, mm -hmm. and that's the thing that, you know, we are filing on a principle. And I don't know how many pharmacists out there can do this, but I'm not going to, you know, give up without putting a fight. And this is what I... You know, 20 years ago, I came to the profession and it blessed me with many things and it's beauty is now it's me for me to pay back to my profession and, and that to, to stand up. And yet I'm not strong, but I believe that many of us come together, we'd be invincible. And like you said, just follow, get yourself educated and come together as a group. It's okay to be scared, fear, but you are smart. How many of us became pharmacists? You beat all the art to become a pharmacist. You're smart. Just come out there, get out the the, the darkness, and come to the light. And yeah, this it's okay to not know it. It's okay to not know everything. You don't have to be the expert on anything. Nobody know anything, but oh, we come man. together. We ask a smart question, right? That's right. And that's where yeah. you, we get to learn. Just ask. You know, put the logic. You know, don't just put the the thing on the screen like, you know, PBM talking about like propaganda. Like they coming out and help us. Mm -hmm. Shit, they don't help me. All right, I'm dying every day. When, when, when you come tell you tell them you help Danny, you don't. You put me out of business. Okay, but yeah, that's what they're saying. That's what the communists would do. That's not the way. You know, mm -hmm. we should be better. We should walk down the street and be proud of the profession. You know, I hope that their children someday want to be a pharmacist, be a doctor. Now, look at the whole country. Nobody want to go to healthcare. Look at the enrollment. This is not the system we built for. We built for failure. How those are there? Every single leader out there in any percent. Look at, look at your children. Look at the way that we're going to contribute to down the road. How do you look at them when you are causing this problem? I, I yeah. dare those executives of, of, of PBM look at that and then mm -hmm. say, how do you proud to contribute to this country down the road? And and you know, I come from a country where I say that. Freedom, it takes blood to protect that. Mm -hmm. And it takes the blood of a pharmacist to protect our profession. If you care and you love your profession, step up. Okay? It's not oh, damn, that. Danny. Yeah. You yeah. just upstaged me on my own show. I love this man. I love this man. I, I think New York pharmacists are in good hands. You are excellent, my friend. You're a pharmacist. You've got a brief want it. You're here. You're here. Absolutely. You, Danny, your, your whole state of pharmacists are just built differently. New York a true story. really has a way of getting the message across that if you keep messing with one of us, you're going to get all of us. Yeah. I wish some other states would come together and be united in that way. And I really have always appreciated, I mean, we've 
spoken to Steve Moore from Pisney and, you know, other of our friends from New York. I know that you guys also spend a lot of time making sure that your legislators are really informed and, you know, uh, having John McDonald, a pharmacist in the house, you know, is a positive step because he can at least tell others legislators what it's like to be a pharmacy owner and these people are not lying they're really putting their lives and their entire you know families needs on the line for their patients just like you said if you close there's not going to be anyone to serve those homebound patients and i think it takes all of that to get the message across so yeah kudos to pisney for having you in charge absolutely absolutely your guys' protests back in the day, I don't know if you're still doing them at the Capitol, but those inspired rallies everywhere else in the country. And Lauren and I both had the privilege of attending some of them. And it was I, it was so inspiring, first of all, just seeing like so many pharmacists show up, but also seeing that, you know, pharmacists could show up with the right kind of, of that, that perfect blend of like passion and anger. Like we are not, we will not be silenced, you know, like it was just really incredible. Yeah. And we mean business, right? We Absolutely. Care patients, yeah. right? We, 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 we fight for them and, and we fight for our children. So, you know, they can take our money, but they can't take our children in the future. And we're not going to let them do that. And we fight. We need that in Texas. So, yeah. <laughs> Lord, we need that in Texas. Yeah. So, Danny, I have a but question for you. I, so, Go, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I'm going to ask my question. I, I truly, you know, thank to our member that we've always been there. We have a guardian that they're watching over us, guiding us one generation, pass on the knowledge to the next one and coaching us to do the right thing for our profession. And we all, all doing it for volunteer. Our leadership are very passionate about it. And so many of our main patients, our, our members as well, we really appreciate to, to the help and same thing like past member, you know, we are very advocate to, to what we believe not just practicing, but we, we practice advocacy on top of our profession. I, I would just love to know, what is it about New York? What, why do you think that in your state, it's okay and acceptable for pharmacists to get loud for the profession, but then other parts of the country, uh, you know, pharmacists are told to stand down, be quiet, be polite, be nice, don't talk about PBMs, don't you know, don't do protests. Some of, we, we've heard these messages in various forms for years now, not not always aimed at us. You know, we no one can really shut put up, but um, I, I've seen, for example, protest notice come out where they say like, we're, here's what we're not gonna do. We're not gonna make noise. We're not gonna hold signs. We're not gonna yell. We're all just gonna show up for this hearing and wear our white jackets or another case where there was a, a PBM, there was a pharmacy day at the state capitol here in Arizona, and the pharmacists were you know, specifically told not to talk about PBMs that day. What is it that makes you guys different? Why, why, why are you not doing what the rest of the country is doing? Well, uh, it's very from opinion to one another. Uh, I think we all feel the same way, but we, we see this way glove had to be off. We want to go organic, right? This is the real thing that happening. We can't be playing nice anymore. Enough is enough, you know, and it's so many at a stake. I mean, we cannot continue to just cover shit with, you know, <laughs> something else. It doesn't work. We got to go out there and just tell them that it is, you know, if you got met Roger, he wouldn't, he would just say as straight as it is, you know, like, you know, it, it, it it's a real thing. And and uh, that that's what we feel and we passionate about the second thing is you know in terms of, of, of public relation we will respond to noise if you are so quiet nobody care and they just work over you and unfortunately you know this is what happened in our country when you don't talk they step over your head you know that's not the way to do it you you know this is this is you know enough how, how long you gonna hide in that corner i'm just saying step out at least you know one time you die you actually talk about it. Why? You, yeah. Why? You know, then just carry it to the grave with you know without having a chance to to protest. So yes, we you know we will, you know I said maybe this is what the word would say: the cursed people die only one time, but the coward die a thousand times. So which way you choose? Are you an African pharmacist or are you a hiding pharmacist? 
which way you choose. You know, that's all I can say. You know, somebody hears what you're saying and that they they take that to heart because otherwise we are the people doing the same thing over and over and thinking this time it's going to be different. You know, it's it's right. And, and I really advise people out there. Look, if pharmacy is not our profession, many of us change to different profession, but you still can advocate. You know, I mean, I've seen people become real estate and banker and all that, and they still protecting the pharmacy. So, yeah, we are pharmacists. We're smart. But you know what? The hell with healthcare system, if you don't have pharmacists, what are you going to do? You know, enough of that. We got to step up and say, this is enough. You know, we don't have to hide in that counter all the time. We can do something else. And that's also brilliant. Sorry to dominate the conversation with you, Danny. But, I, you know, Robert Popovian was the vice president of government affairs for Pfizer, and he is a friend of Putt. And I had a conversation with him once and I asked him a similar question. And he said, the problem is that unless you're sick, you don't realize the value of your pharmacy. He was talking about the public, but he was also kind of talking about policymakers. And I was like, yeah, but you know, I take these maintenance medications and he goes, yeah, but maintenance medications, that's not being sick. Sick is when you've got an acute effect if infection or you are in pain and you want your pharmacist and you want your pharmacist now. And I think that's the future that a lot of people are just, not thinking about you know that you're gonna need your pharmacist and if your pharmacist isn't there and you have to wait three days for your pain pills or whatever it is you know that's gonna be hard and that's what we keep trying to raise the flag about that you want your pharmacist <laughs> you really do you want that person to be available to you you don't want them run out of business you don't want them understaffed you don't want them stressed out you want them to be happy and fulfilled so they can take the best possible care of you so you can be healthy and happy yourself. 100%. We are feeding into equili uh, equili healthcare equity, right? We're talking about green energy, but there's nothing in the in there we're talking about green healthcare. To make it happen, we need to have everybody in healthcare to be equal, to be shared, check and balance. Um, and so, you know, this is what happened in our healthcare, where, where we not advocate for that, and so we have become under. We are red healthcare. We're not green healthcare. So it is going down to us would be the first group that have exposed. Respect our profession. You either a pharmacist or you're not a pharmacist. If you are a pharmacist, you're gonna step up, and you protect yourself. And that's the first thing I ask you: advocate for your profession then your family, then your patient, that you swear the oath to. We are not a merchant. We are not like a mercenary where you go out there and make money in a patient. This is what it is. If you are not step up, protect yourself, you're being chased around like all the time. You gotta step up. And number one, it's the law. The law dictate business, any business. Don't let the PBM write the law for you. You got to step up and write that law for protect yourself and your profession and the whole healthcare and the patient involved. So get involved. And that's all I call for all healthcare and pharmacists. Step up, be part of it. <laughs> Thank you. Join Pot. Join Pot. Yes. <laughs> absolutely. And thank you, Pot, because this is where the health transparency is very important. You are educating people without fear, and it's very important. That's a that's a freedom of speech, and that's what we endorse most. And thank yeah. you for for having the heart and and and, and doing this. Appreciate thank it. Appreciate <laughs> thank you, Danny, for coming on and filling me full of fucking joy at this point. Like yeah. it is so good to like have Danny come on and like do yeah. this stuff. And Seriously. like, I'm like, it just is keep awesome. Talking. Just keep on talking. I like like it. your enthusiasm and everything. It's just it it's excellent like it's it's contagious almost gonna, even dull jaded so like off jeremy up in new york like new york is about to get elevated to a whole new level yes yeah. and well and also your perspective having been born in another country is also really helpful because i think it's easy to forget the freedoms that we have here because we've always had them you know and 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 you've just done a beautiful job explaining how they apply to the business of pharmacy and why we all need to be pharmacy patriots, I guess. 100%. Because you, if you don't protect your business and step up, you will be bullied by big guy over and over. These guys, not even in our profession, 
they not there to help the patient. They they're hurting us and hurt the patient. We gotta stop it. We and actually we have to leverage because we are professional. You know, we shouldn't be afraid of these, you know, gangster. I look at them just like yeah. gangster. Yeah. All right. Yeah. They are. They're, they're running a racket. It's racketeering. That's exactly right. Anything you know? and everything to do and with we, them. In all ways. Like we have to reject it. One hundred percent. And we gotta step up and work together, continue to communicate, work smart, and we're gonna fight them at that battle that battle and we have ally we have tons of ally that will come help us so reach out to patient other healthcare provider because we all in it together it's not just us you know we are part of it yeah. like domino if you take one of us out the whole system will collapse so you yeah. can't just think of like we the only one suffer all of us suffer yeah we got people from everywhere now joining this yeah. battle uh, we got Monique, her background, it was PR, wasn't it, before you got involved with PUT? Uh, Brandy, you were a nurse before you owned a pharmacy. Like, yep. you've got, we got Danny who came over from Vietnam. And then, you know, I'm a second generation pharmacist. Andrew took time out of the Avett Brothers tour to come and do this. <laughs> <laughs> and we will never. I couldn't do it. Oh, oh, man. <laughs> I haven't trimmed it a little bit today. Dang. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, good stuff. But yeah, we are, well, we are, I think communication is key going forward. I think we can do a lot of good things together going forward. It is um, hard sometimes uh, to uh, wait things out and see what people are going to do and say and uh, what their mentality might be behind it. But it is, uh, Communication is good going forward uh, between everyone. Uh, yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> well, I, you know, I'll, I'll never stop hammering the communication is important because it, it's all we have. You know, when you get trained, I, I was frustrated on you know, to taking it back to the, the horse that we can't kick enough at this point, um, but taking it back to like where we started with the CPSN press release, my, my extreme frustration with that and then with the cpes and leadership response to it is that there's this perception like you can blast your people with information and that will somehow make it better versus what should be happening which is a two-way conversation because cpes and members have legitimate concerns they 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 legitimately have a right to be upset about the timing of the news release if they're upset about the relationship with express scripts they have a right to be upset about that and they have a right to be heard and it's not really fair to, you know, launch a, a missive, you know, with a, a, almost a thousand words starting off explaining why, you know, you shouldn't be upset about this when everyone should be upset about this. So it's important. important. We have to we have to have the dialogue. Dialogue is important. Yeah. Yeah, it's you know it's also better. you shouldn't have to explain if you're explaining yourself that much, then yeah, you, you probably fucked up. Like, there's only so much nuance in this world. <laughs> like, That's the thing. If you're explaining yeah. that, you're losing. There's just no other way to say that. You're losing. Yeah, so it, that was just mismanaged, and that kind of stuff happens. The thing is, is like, when it does happen, you have to try to fix it. And if you can't directly fix it, contact me. <laughs> and I will go ahead and I'll launch an entire campaign on your behalf. You're going to take a black eye or two, but I'll launch an entire campaign on your behalf where I call your entire organization terrible. And then all your members come out to defend it <laughs> and go, no, no, this is what's different. This is what's different. And I'm like, okay, maybe it is. And then I won't have to show memes like this <laughs> or this. <laughs> Which yeah. I had not shown yet. Oh boy. And I held back. <laughs> yeah. So, you, you know, Appreciate come you out and do something. Communicate with other people. If you can't do direct pushback, we'll do p direct pushback for you. <laughs> we'll do parallel. It would be pushback. nicer if you tell us how to do it. Yeah. Just a um, happy note while we have been on this podcast, I just got a notification that Senate Bill, Monique, you're very familiar with this bill. Senate Bill 444 passed the House of Representatives with yes. overwhelming no. bipartisan support. Yes, no, that's, that's a good bill because it requires 
that commercial payers have to reimburse pharmacies the acquisition cost of the drug. And we don't see a lot of that kind of law when it comes to the commercial plan. So Louisiana, like New York, in its own way. So New York, Louisiana, very different flavors. But what you two have in common is you have this ability to get your members to march. You know, like you march in order. It might, however it looks is how it looks, but you all get together, you get your you know, act together and you go forward. And the um, relationship that you have with your communities and with your state legislators is really impressive. So uh, congratulations to all of the pharmacies in Louisiana, the Louisiana Independent Pharmacies Association. What a historic moment. It's yeah. so cool. Cheers. So cool. Yeah. Absolutely. Cheers. Cheers. To learn more about Pharmacists United for Truth and Transparency, how you can help fight eating and abuse of our healthcare system. Visit our website at truthrx.org.